Many of us have genius within us. We have ideas that we, we use it for the company. We have, we put in long hours, 60, 70 hours a week for the company store. We'll break our backs for the company. But when it comes to us, when it comes to using our genius in our own behalf, taking a chance with our own creativeness, acting on our own dreams and ideas, somewhere along the line we get paralyzed. We find some reason not to do it. Oh, I did that. I'm not as good as they are. I don't have their education. I felt inferior because I never had a college education. So I felt inferior. I thought people with college education were the most intelligent people in the world. And I felt inferior and intimidated by them. So I wouldn't want to speak before people that had more education than I did. What? Come on, Les, you can do that. Oh, no, I can't. Les, you're a good speaker, man. You can just communicate with people, period. Well, you know, they, you know I, I'm not, you, there's just some things I just don't know. And, I just, can I pass, you know, get somebody else. I got a friend, man, he, this guy has a master's degree. He's real good, you know, get him. But I just, I'm not the one to come speak to that group. See, I didn't know what I had in my hands. And fortunately, I had somebody around me who saw what I had and was willing to work with me until I could see it too. See, that's, that's what many times we have to have. Somebody could look beyond our thoughts and see our needs and, and hold that vision until we are able to capture that vision ourselves. How do we handle some fears? I was talking with my friend, Pat Johnson, who's the president of Begin Within Seminars. If you think about some major fear you have, here's one thing she said, which is good. She said, Les, if you got a, a real major fear, she said, take a deep breath and see yourself strong enough and more than able to handle that fear, whatever it is. Everybody take a deep breath. Whatever that fear, just feel that you have the strength and the power and the capacity to handle it. Another friend of mine, Ron Weiner, he says, when I'm confronted with a fear, I just practice the art of looking beyond the fear. I go behind it and see it already completed, see it already resolved. And then I carry myself accordingly as if it already is taken care of. That dispels the fear for me. Another friend of mine by the name of Jack Wilson said, when I experience fear, I think about when I was in Vietnam and what I handled back then and I look at what I'm dealing with right now and the fact that I survived that, the fact that I had other kinds of situations that were close calls or that I was overwhelmed with fear and I came through it, then I look at this and says, this is nothing here. And we've all had that experience, what Jack had. How many of you had some situations that you were in that you were overwhelmed with fear? You didn't know how you're going to come out, how you're going to survive. And you did. You survived and you didn't die. Raise your hand if you survive. All right. So what you got to do, whatever that was, whatever that state of consciousness, whatever that self-confidence that you had, however you stood up within yourself, here's what we know. You survived. Here's what we know. You're still here. You didn't die. Hello. You did not die. You didn't die. You hear that? You didn't die. You're here right now. You got it and you handled that fear. You kicked it out of there. All right? Remember that play Color Purple? I remember when, when Alba told the girl she couldn't go with sure. He said, where you going? You know, this girl been wondering all her life, live her dream. But she was afraid. She felt incompetent and he had beaten her down and her self-esteem had eroded. He said, where you going? You can't talk. Sure can talk. You ugly, you dumb, she got class, you ain't got nothing. Where you going? You ain't gonna make it, you're gonna fail. She said, look here, I might be ugly, I might be dumb, I might can't talk. She said, but I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. And so as you begin to look at the fears in back of you, you came through those fears and you're still here. See, that's a testament about how powerful you are. And so whatever the volcano is, you have the capacity to take that volcano on, the capacity to jump in it and find your true identity. Here's another thing that keep a lot of people from taking on the volcanoes and jumping into the challenges that they're confronted with. The fear of making mistakes or not feeling good enough. Guess what? You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. Guy said this and it's true. He said the person who has never made a mistake hasn't done anything. If you're going to make some mistakes, if you want to do something out here, you're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to be criticized when you come out into the arena called life. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. It goes with the territory. 
but it's okay. What's important is that you bring your stuff out here. Are you good enough? Prepare yourself. See, there's no substitute for competency. A positive attitude won't get it. Being enthusiastic won't get it. So you got to prepare yourself. You've got to develop yourself. You've got to practice. You've got to work. You've got to do your homework. You've got to do your research. See, a lot of people have a yes, I can attitude, but a no, I can't aptitude. <laughs> and competency builds confidence. And confidence feeds into competency. See, the better you become, the more confident you feel. And the more confident you feel, the better you want to become. You realize that you have no ceiling. That you can better whatever you've done so far. You can go beyond that. You don't become cocky and arrogant, feeling that you've already arrived, as most people have. And that's why they've settled for less than what they rightly deserve in life. Because they feel they have arrived and they say, well, I can rest now. I can rest on my laurels now. I've, I've made it. <laughs> no, no, no. As long as you're breathing, you've got some more work to do. There's something else for you to achieve. The publisher of USA Today said that unless you've made some major mistakes in life, you haven't started living yet. So a lot of people, if you've never made any major blunders, made some major mistakes, lost some serious money, taken some serious risk. You haven't started living yet. You don't call that living, not rocking the boat, going through life quietly, tiptoeing safely to an early grave. No, 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 no. You gotta take some chances. You wanna bring some adventure to your life. Repeat after me, please. I will develop myself, sharpen my skills. I'm good, better than good, and better than most. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, keep getting better. Keep getting better. Here's something else. See, a lot of people, because they don't want to make any mistakes, it takes us to the next level. A lot of people don't want to fail. Fear of failure, fear of success, and guess what else? Fear of the unknown. I saw a guy last week, came up to visit me, haven't seen him for years, Bob Boyd from Columbus, Ohio. Bob Boyd introduced me to motivational tapes, introduced me to a lot of motivational speakers and positive thinking and a multi-level marketing company at that time called Best Line Products, had an inspirational leader named Bill Bailey, Jim Rowan was in that as well. And so Bob Boyd, that, that folded. And, but here's what about Bob Boyd, why I was interested in seeing Bob last week that drove up from Columbus. Bob Boyd, that I know has been involved, personally I know, and I've been involved in business deals with him. Bob has had at least 30 failures that I know. 30 business failures since I've known him since 1972. Incredible. So I wanted to hear this deal that Bob was bringing me. Les, I've got to talk to you. So he came in in the traditional Bob Boyd fashion. Hello, Les, how you doing? I said, fine, Bob. I wanted to know if Bob had lost in his fire steam, had life beaten his dream out of him. Bob said, Les Brown, I've got a deal. You know, you get exposure to a lot of people. Man, I've got a deal. I'm thinking, does he want me to join Amway? What is this? <laughs> Man, I've got something going. Man, this thing, man, Les, it's a money machine. I said, tell me about it, Bob. But here's what was going on in my mind. Bob didn't mention anything about all the losses, deals we'd lost some money on. He, it never came up in conversation. It was like this is the first deal he ever brought me. I said, what courage. You know what Winston Churchill said? <laughs> you know what Winston Churchill said about courage, Pat? He said, courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. 